Okay, um, so uh, Dia did not sleep a lot, I guess, but he's here this morning, so uh, thank you. Um, so uh, it, it was supposed to be a presentation also with uh, Henrik, but Henrik uh, uh, couldn't leave Japan and uh, he was in the hospital a few days ago. I, I don't have very recent news, but uh, uh, so uh, I have a, a, a thought about him. Um, thank you, Dia, for, uh, for being here this morning. You have the floor for your presentation on fast flux proxy networks. Thank you. Thank you all. So, uh, good morning. Bonjour à tout le monde. Uh, my name is Dia. For those who don't know me, I'm a senior security researcher at uh, OpenDNS. And uh, like Eric was saying, uh, this, was this was meant to be with uh, Rick, uh, my good friend from Malware Must Die, but uh, he had some personal... Uh, he, he couldn't make it for personal reasons. So, uh, I just wanted to tell him and with all of us that we are thinking about him and we wish him well. Uh, otherwise, the, the talk will be about uh, a fast flux proxy network that have been uh, kind of monitoring and tracking and studying uh, since the last BotConf. In fact, one of the, the talks uh, that were presented last year um, by Nick Summerlin and Brad Porter uh, were about proxy networks. And uh, one of the, the, the networks they covered kind of triggered my, my curiosity and I just wanted to uh, take the, the study further and uh, and see what we can uh, find out. So without further ado, uh, this is kind of the outline. So I'll start with an introduction about OpenDNS. Um, nothing, it won't be a sales pitch, uh, but just to give you an idea about uh, what we have and what we do. And then uh, I'll cover a little bit of the uh, crimeware ecosystem uh, as of today, uh, an overview, and then we'll talk about fast flux uh, networks and the detection methods uh, used. Then uh, the focus, well, uh, I found out that this proxy network was serving, among other things, Zeus CNC domains. So we'll look at how it's being used by other uh, malware families. And then we'll get some uh, results uh, about some stats regarding the TLDs, registrars, and the bots and the clients looking them up. And then finally, last year we covered uh, uh, Rick and I, Nikelios, about net, and we kind of did uh, an extensive study and then we uh, disclosed the identity of the, um, the people behind it. However, a year later, uh, the, um, the guy is still at large and the botnet is kind of coming back. So there are like some new domains and they're serving uh, malicious payloads again. So I'll just give you an update about <coughs> uh, some of the current uh, status of that. Okay, so this is the uh, presence of OpenDNS worldwide. So we have data centers uh, in North America, Europe, and Asia. And uh, what that allows us to have is a lot of traffic of DNS, uh, I mean DNS traffic of two types, recursive and, <coughs> and authoritative. So the recursive is coming from the clients, and we will basically see the client IPs, and then we'll be asking the questions to the authoritative name servers if the, uh, uh, the, a like the records are not cached in our resolvers. And then on the authoritative side, we'll be able to get all of the answers from the authoritative name servers, and that allows us to build our own kind of historical DNS database, which is, uh, as you know, is very useful. <coughs> now, uh, how about the crimeware ecosystem? Well, this one is the mainstream, or the mass malware, as some of uh, you uh, might call it. So uh, th at the top of the, the, the diagram, you have the initial phase where you either uh, receive like a, a spam email with some malicious attachment, or you go visit some compromised sites, or you visit some sites that are serving ads and they have been compromised in a way, and uh, that's what we call malvertising. The next stage, or maybe through multiple steps, you'll be uh, redirected to an exploit kit landing page, and <coughs> the ones I mentioned here, <coughs> are the ones that will lead to uh, the uh, phoning back to the domains that are hosted on this proxy network. So I'm not covering all of the exploit kits that are around. I'm just focusing on the ones that I saw being <coughs> uh, like a, a preliminary stage to uh, the CNCing to uh, the proxy network uh, I will be covering. So we'll see like Angular, Fiesta, Goo, Nuclear, 
rig and sweet orange. And these were leading to phoning back to, uh, or basically triggering traffic to Asprox, Zmot, and RealDOM uh, CNC. So if you have like the signatures, that's what you will find. And then you have the magnitude on the other side, and this one is very interesting. So there were some uh, magnitude exploit kit attacks that led to both uh, phoning back to the Zbot CNCs and also Kilios, which we covered last year. All this to say that these proxy networks are very versatile and they're serving like multiple preliminary um, uh, stages um, to infect users. <coughs> now, what are FastFlux uh, networks? Um, all of us know about them, so it's a DNS-based redundancy evasion technique. It's both good and also bad, so if it's abused by, by criminals. Uh, a FastFlux domain resolves to a lot of IPs scattered across ASNs and um, a lot of ASNs and country codes with relatively low TTLs, or you'll have a FastFlux domain resolving so to a single IP with a, a, a TTL of zero. And that's the case of Kilios. That's the case of Kilios. And uh, now they're used for Trojan CNCs, spam, scam, pharmacy, uh, data domains, and a lot of other things, um, just to name a few. Now, in order to catch these, you'll have to have DNS traffic, because we're starting from DNS. Since uh, my company core kind of uh, data and, and work is about that, uh, we use the DNS uh, traffic and some other intel and the IP infrastructure to uh, discover patterns and kind of predict attacks. Now, one of the things we use is the authoritative DNS stream. Currently, this is the way it looks like. So you'll have like uh, streaming uh, entries where you have the ASN number and then the domain, then the 2LD and then the IP. So the ASN will basically be the ASN of that IP uh, to which the domain resolves. And then you have the IP of the name, name server. Oh, this one is playing tricks on me. And then you'll have a timestamp, a TTL, and then the type of the, the, the record being asked for. Now, um, this can go to thousands of entries per second uh, from a subset of resolvers, but if you uh, include all of the resolvers we have, then that might be even more. And then uh, for this, you'll have to implement your own filters because as the data comes in, it's um, real time, so you'll have to be uh, aware of that and be ready to have your filtering heuristics to catch what you, what you need or what you want. And again, this is faster than storing stuff in Hadoop or some persistent uh, storage and then doing uh, offline uh, lookups. Now, having the offline is very useful for historical investigation, but if you want to have things uh, in real time, then you'll have to prepare your heuristics and, and catch things on the fly. <coughs> now, having said that, uh, one method to catch these uh, Zbot CNCs, like the, the, the CNCs I will be discussing on that FastFlux proxy network, is to have a seed of known Zbot CNCs. And then uh, you'll be harvesting uh, these domains to get the, their IPs. And uh, after that, since you have the IPs, it's a simple heuristic. You'll just grab the entries from the stream, and then you'll catch any uh, domain which whose IP or name server's IP is within the pool and also has a TTL of 150 seconds. So I, I didn't mention that this proxy network is typical uh, like the characteristics are, it's um, the, these FastFlex domains are hosted on IPs with a TTL of 150 seconds for the domain, and we saw that um, they kind of recycle these IPs, uh, and we applied like some other filtering heuristics to eliminate uh, false positives. And then once you uh, grab those domains, you'll add them to your seed of domains, and also the IPs will go back uh, to your seed of IPs. So this is one method. However. I found some uh, issues with it at some point because as I was milking the domains, some domains were either being sinkholed or parked, so I was getting like some garbage uh, IPs in, in my set. So I kind of decided to use another method. Uh, granted, <coughs> I lost some of the data because I was uh, being more uh, strict, but uh, the data was has, has become more accurate. So this is how it works, the way I did it. So I started with initial... Um, lists of Zbot FastFlex domains. And then I was basically resolving them uh, using our uh, DNSDB. Uh, the DNSDB as we use it uh, currently in our lab is uh, stored in memory on Redis, uh, thanks to my one of my colleagues. Uh, so it's faster than the Hadoop, but it's like an intermediary between the streaming 
and the Hadoop, you have the Redis, so you can do like fast lookups uh, into memory. So in phase two, what you do, you get like the domain to IP with TTL, and then you extract the IP such that the TTL is 150 seconds. And then in the fourth phase, what you do is uh, you go back and use those IPs and get the domains uh, via inverse lookup. So it's kind of a double verification here. And then those domains I get in phase four, I add them to my list, my initial list of uh, Zbot FastFlex domains. And then I also go and extract the IPs that uh, which had uh, the TTL of 150 seconds. And then finally, I add them to my pool of uh, uh, proxy network IPs. So uh, again, like there are a lot of phases here, and you might think this is overkill and it's a lot of um, stuff. But I uh, empirically, I saw that this limited the false positives in the, the set of domains and IPs that we were uh, tracking and, and storing. <coughs> now, uh, fast flex proxy networks. The concept is simple, but it's very efficient. So on one side, you have the targets, the victims, and um, they get infected like we saw earlier in that diagram of the ecosystem uh, via compromised sites, uh, malvertising, other first stage uh, delivery mechanisms. And then you, have, uh, you land on an exp uh, exploit kit landing URL. And then uh, if your machine is vulnerable, you'll get like the, the payload dropped, uh, maybe multiple several stages of payloads, and finally you'll get the malware that the criminals uh, intended to, let's say, infect you with, which delivers the best kind of uh, benefit, let's say, if it's financial. The point is, uh, you have the targets here, and then when they phone back to the uh, bots and the proxy network, uh, either to announce themselves, or to exfiltrate data, or basically to get some extra uh, information, or useful for their operation. And then behind the scenes, in fact, you have the back-end CNCs that are shielded or protected or covered uh, by the proxy network. So hence the word proxy. It's um, like a simple. And uh, <coughs> the idea is that you'll have to have access to some of these bots to analyze their traffic to see the, the CNCs that sit behind the scenes. Now, last year when we covered Kilios with Rick, uh, we were able to get access or have access to some of the back-end CNC's. There were like around eight. And the guys behind it were kind of using a one uh, hosting provider from which they were getting like VPS's in Germany, um, Netherlands, and, and the UK, from which they were pushing the payloads in the, pr the proxy network. And then via whatever delivery mechanism machines, uh, people were infected, the payloads were being dropped from the uh, bots, not from the back-end CNC. So as you can see, um, this is kind of an inefficient and uh, resilient uh, infrastructure. Uh, a couple months ago at Virus Bulletin, uh, uh, researchers from uh, Bitdefender covered another uh, proxy network uh, that had kind of the same uh, infrastructure or architecture. And now, as I mentioned here, Kilios had a TTL of, 100 uh, of zero seconds, and Zbot has a TTL of 150 seconds, which is the one we, covering we are covering today. Now I mentioned uh, I mentioned uh, Zeus. Um, well, all of you know about the Zeus crimeware. So it has multiple components. You have a config file that has, um, you know, URLs for configuration. Uh, sorry, yeah, you have the config file that has URLs for the web um, for the um, config files for the drop zone and for also some extra payload. And then it also indicates the web injects to use to intercept traffic to let's say the financial institutions or the banks. And you have the Zeus builder, so uh, you feed it with uh, those inputs and then you'll get a binary at the end. And then you can deliver via multiple means. And then you have a control panel that helps you kind of monitor the health of your network and the rate of infection and all kinds of stats um, uh, by the criminal. Now, um, you know that th the Zeus has been known since 2006, and it has leaked, the co source code leaked in 2011. So this diagram kind of shows the evolution uh, over like a period of seven years. <coughs> and it went through a lot of uh, kind of modifications and uh, spin-offs. Um, we had like other versions that tried to improve or to um, kind of repurpose the the uh, initial um, goals of the, of the of the Trojan uh, banking uh, kit. Now the Zeus uh, CNCs, they're they can be hosted on on different uh, kind of platforms. So either they host them on their uh, on the compromised sites, 
or they will use like bulletproof hosting so it will be just like a, a VPS let's say on an IP uh, taken from um, a provider that is very uh, lax or does not respond to abuse reports and then you have the fast flux botnet uh, infrastructure which is the one uh, I've been covering now <coughs> The Zeus CNC URLs, they will deliver either configuration files, binary files, or, or drop zones. And we'll see that uh, this proxy network has covered a variety of, of these ones. Now, just to show you the extent of this uh, proxy network, this is an animation with... Uh Let's see. Okay, to play the trick on me, it's not playing. But, uh, so what we are, are we looking at here? This is basically uh, simply the domains as they map to the IPs. And what we did is take like a snapshots on a daily basis for a couple of months. And then we saw that <coughs> uh, the IPs were growing as they infected more machines and add them to the pool of uh, the proxy network and then the domains will basically uh, hop around the IPs as we evolve over time. So um, I just wanted to show this because we released a tool um, last this summer in Black Hat, we call it Open Graffiti and the idea is that um, you can load uh, your data and you can th uh, visualize uh, the data in 3D. So one of my colleagues, Thibaut, he implemented this um, using like OpenGL and a lot of uh, optimization uh, libraries and, and techniques. Uh, I invite you to go and check it out. Open Graffiti, it's open source, and you can basically load any kind of data set you have, uh, even if it's not related to security, and then you can visualize it and do a lot of uh, interesting scripts. <coughs> now, how about the malware uh, that are using these CNC domains? <coughs> so I was, uh, as I was saying, Zeus was one of the main ones uh, that was using the CNC domains on this proxy network to deliver config URLs, binary and drop zone URLs. We also saw Citadel, Kins, and Ice9. We also saw a lot of Asproc, Zmot, Rear Dom uh, traffic using these domains. Interestingly, uh, the new Zeus came over, um, the, the new variant that reappeared in July. They used this infrastructure for a short period of time uh, before going uh, back to kind of bulletproof uh, or just generic hosting uh, providers. And then we also recently saw Tiny Banker using this infrastructure, uh, like maybe a couple, like a week ago, or about 10 days ago, they started, uh, like Tiny Banker CNC started uh, being hosted on this infrastructure. And then there were uh, UR, uh, UR uh also the uh, DDoS bot Madness Pro used some of these CNCs. We also found some pony panels, and then phishing uh, websites were also hosted on some of these CNC domains, uh, on some of these domains. <coughs> now, this is just a sample of the Zeus URLs uh, I grabbed. Uh, as you can see, the domains were delivering the, the different kinds of URLs for Zeus, the config, the binary, and uh, the drop zone. So these domains, they go back maybe three months ago or a couple months ago. Uh, but... Uh if you have like your passive DNS, you can go back and check their kind of history and you can make correlations to what you're seeing in your traffic uh, today. Some of the other uh, domains also were uh, being used for Citadel, uh, the variant of Zeus. <coughs> and then we also saw uh, Kins and Ice9, which has also come uh, like improvements on, on the Zeus. Now, also some phishing sites uh, were <coughs> are being used uh, by some of these domains. And then also Asprox, Zmot, and Reardom, like I was saying. So the Asprox uh, kind of chain of infection leads to click fraud activity. Uh, there was a, a good report by Dambala uh, where they described like the chain. And it starts with a, at a malicious attachment. <coughs> where you get infected and then you phone back to the ESPROC CNC and then you get an update 
in addition to a ZMOT payload with embedded ZMOT domains, and then you talk to uh, the CNC domains on the proxy network to get the, the Ravnix bootkit, <coughs> rear them, and finally the click fraud activity. So <coughs> the idea here is that we are um, seeing that this proxy network is used for a variety of purposes. <coughs> now, these are some of the domains uh, you see here. Just for reference, uh, I know you can see it, but you can contact me if you want the, the list. And uh, these are like the emergent threats rules um, with which you could ca catch uh, that traffic uh, in your in your logs. So you have the ZMOD checking in and uh, the requesting the portable executable payload configuration, and then you also have the SPROX click fraud beaconing uh, to these uh, CNCs we mentioned. <coughs> Now, this is the case of uh, uh, the Madness Pro DDoS bot that was also using wa one of these domains. So in one of these URLs, it was basically announcing um, some config or, or some like uh, information about the infected machine. And then uh, the new Game Over Zeus, like I mentioned, started using this infrastructure when it came back in July. So after the takedown in uh, the summer, when it re-emerged, they abandoned the peer-to-peer -peer and then they resorted initially to hosting the CNCs on the FastFlex proxy network. And at the time, um, when it, it used this infrastructure, there were around 230 IPs from the proxy network used to host the uh, new ga ga Game Over Zeus uh, um, DGA CNCs. Now, those are some of the references uh, if you want to check uh, for more details. <coughs> Now, um, Tiny Banker also started using this, this infrastructure recently, uh, like ten, 10 days ago. So, uh, we most of us know about it the Tiny Banker uh, kind of little banking Trojan. So, it's like very small. It, it, it was born um, after the, the Zeus source code leak. Um, it was delivered via Black Hole and then some other exploit kits. And then it switched to 64 uh, bit uh, code. And then um, an analysis of the code in early 2012 showed that there were some copy pasting from the Zeus leaked code. So it's not exactly the same, but it got inspired. It, uh, it was inspired by the, the leaked Zeus um, code. And then the um, it was kind of believed that it's believed that the group running the the Timba campaign is based in Russia and having no connection to the Zeus uh, group. There was a good trend micro report describing the ties to other malicious activities related to web hosting, pornography, and uh, Money Mule network networks. So I invite you to check the Trend Micro report. <coughs> now, uh, let's look at some of these uh, stats regarding Tiny Banker. So, uh, looking at around uh, 18,000 uh, DGAs of Tiny Banker, uh, we saw that 44 of them were hosted on the ZBot FastFlex proxy network. Currently, there are like seven live domains, and 900 plus IPs from the proxy network are hosting these uh, CNCs of Timba. And then 471 live ones are currently active. When you take a sample of uh, these IPs, you'll find that, that a large number of them are running Windows. Um, so, <coughs> unfortunately, that has to be dealt with. Just a breakdown of the hosting um, IPs for the Timba CNCs. So it's mainly uh, Eastern European, like uh, Ukraine and Russia, but also in the United States. And then you'll see that also it goes back to covering Europe. So you have Kazakhstan, Romania, also Canada. Um, HK, I believe, is Croatia, and then Taiwan and some other countries. So the, the point is it's mainly um, hosted in Eastern Europe here. Now, these are some of the SHA-1 uh, for the payloads that uh, had CNCs hosted on the ZBOT proxy network. So I didn't put everything here, just the ones that had domains hosted on the infrastructure we were covering, for your reference. And then there were some other miscellaneous uh, cases. You have like uh, some payloads 
um, downloading either binaries or configs and uh, or like announcing um, the their status. I I'm sure some of you will recognize this. Uh, I just didn't include all of the details, um, but these are recognizable. And then there was a case of a pony panel hosted on one of these domains. So again, this uh, proxy network seems to serve anybody and everybody. And uh, <coughs> this is the site. Uh, I'm sure you saw a lot of pony panels. So pony is like an uh, info stealer and it was leaked uh, back in 2012. It's delivered via drive-bys and exploit kits. And this is how it was, uh, or it comes in spam emails. And this is how it's announced, uh, like in um, the forums, with its different characteristics and what it, uh, what it can do. And this is how it's uh, identified by the AV industry. Now, if you look at the, the source code, you will see that uh, there are like some interesting um, components here. You'll have plugins uh, for the, um <coughs> yeah, you'll have like a folder for the plugins, the modules, and then you'll also have um, the list of all of the software for which the uh, Pony Info Stealer will steal passwords for. And then the last uh, bullet, you'll see that it has the DB schema and accessors. But mo most interestingly, you'll have the character set, which is um, Eastern European. Now, uh, these are like some of the modules that you will find in the uh, website of the Pony panel. Then just like the list of all of the software for which it steals the password. So a lot of uh, FTP clients. And uh, at the top, you will see the, the different other... Uh report uh, sorry the those are like all of the um, database tables um, that form the infrastructure of the pony panel back end and then uh, we went and looked on google for distinctive key terms from the pony panel website we found and then with that i was able to find some other sites that had like the same strings uh, let's say and a lot of them were hosting extra malware so this one for instance was uh, an andromeda that had that was hosted on a site having the same structure as the uh, pony panel hosted on the uh, domain on the proxy network and then if you go further and <coughs> try to uh, search for other sorry for this thing it's just going ahead of me um, so the pony panel here if you go and do uh, extra search you'll find that some other sites will have the same structure and um, so basically you can find some other domains having the same pony panel uh, architecture uh, website. Now let's look at some of the uh, statistics or information about the uh, CNC domains. So we'll find that the .su and .ru are the most abused if you take a sample of around 2,000 domains. And uh, some more uh, TLDs are also abused, like the .com, obviously, and .in. The thing is, uh, I believe they don't target the TLDs. They just go through the um, kind of rogue or uh, lax or easily abused uh, host uh, registrars. And from there, they will just go and grab, uh, kind of use the catalog of TLDs they are offering. So it's not that they... Uh, want to abuse RU or .su, it's just that there are some registrars that let's say are based in Russia or Eastern Europe and they cater to a variety of of, uh, of, of TLDs and the pricing is was interesting and maybe they don't respond quickly to abuse reports so hence it was a choice of uh, the criminals behind this uh, campaign. Now if we look at, at the sample of uh, 1200 uh, domains we can look at the abused registrars. So as you see, a lot of them are based in Russia, um, but some of them are abused. Some of them might be kind of, they don't care or, so it's a, it's a mix of things. So we cannot just say that all of these are bad, but some of them might be more lax and uh, complacent than others. Yeah, so it covers like a big spectrum. So you'll have Russia and you'll have BCN and China and a few more in North America. So for your reference, I believe these registrars can be, uh, you know, contacted and, and kind of 
asked for the reason of uh, helping out the uh, kind of this campaign of the, the malicious uh, CNCs. Now, if I go and look at the Zbot proxy IPs geo distribution, so I took like 18,000 uh, recent IPs from the Zbot proxy network. Um, this covered like three months. Uh, I didn't want to take like old IPs because they might uh, have become stale or unused, or maybe they have been cleaned up. And this covered like six, seven hundred ASNs, 71 countries. As we saw for Timba, it was mainly. Um, focused on Eastern Europe to host the CNCs. And then there are around uh, close to 8,000 currently live ones uh, serving uh, or hosting these domains as the customers of the gang behind it uh, ask for. So if there's like a new payload they, they want to deliver, they might go and ask the bot herder and um, have it loaded on the bots and then deliver it to um, the victims. Now, just uh, a visual of the um, hosting infrastructure. So it's mainly in Ukraine, Russia, and Kazakhstan, and with uh, some other uh, European countries. And if we take now the clients that have been phoning back to these CNCs, so over a, a period of 24 hours, there were around uh, 2 million DNS lookups from our traffic. So that's uh, substantial. Uh, and there were like 10,000 plus unique client IPs look in these domains scattered across uh, the entire globe. And if you look at the distribution, you'll see that the U.S. Is, uh, gets the, share, the lion's share. And then you'll have Turkey, India, Vietnam, and some other countries in Europe. But uh, I suspect this is because most of the gains um, that the gang was after was focused in the United States, or maybe because our data might have been biased because we have a bigger presence in the United States. But um, that's kind of an interesting uh, picture here of how the infrastructure is hosted in Eastern Europe, but the kind of the clients phone in them, phone into them are mostly uh, Western countries or, or, or Europe and North America. And there's a bunch in actually in Great Britain, France, and some countries that some of the attendees might be interested in. Now, uh, the other thing I wanted to look at is do a breakdown between the, uh, the CNC serving uh, domains and the ones that are hosting name servers for these domains. So typically, you'll see that the actual domains, the CNC domains, they will resolve to 12 IPs with a TTL of 150, wh whereas the name servers, they will resolve to six IPs with a TTL of 150 seconds. So again, you, you might think this is uh, a no-brainer, but as you discover these patterns, that helps you kind of uh, build heuristics to catch these on the fly. Uh, now, th the reason why I'm mentioning this is that uh, you will see similar patterns in some other hosting infrastructures, so just to keep that in mind. Now, among the uh, around 1,200 domains, half of them were being serving uh, name servers and 11,750 IPs were hosting uh, these name servers. So um, what we can say is that there's like a double flexing where both the CNC domains and the name servers are uh, using the infrastructure of this proxy network to kind of live and come to life. Now, uh, if we look at the CNC domains and try to see what kind of samples they are um Actually, sorry, if we look at these domains and we see what kind of samples are phoning back to them, we'll see that uh, the top, on the top of the list, there's the Zbot payloads. So Zbot is like a generic one. But then you'll, you'll find Upatri, and Upatri is one of the downloaders for Zeus Game Over, sent via, via spam emails uh, delivered by the Cutwhale botnet. So uh, we see kind of the tie between different uh, malicious campaigns here uh, served by this proxy network. Now, as an update on last year's Kilios, uh, so last year we covered the infrastructure and 
we uh, kind of disclosed the identity of the guy and uh, a variety of details about how the thing w was being set up. Now, as of today, there are 23 recorded domains that came back because for several months after the botconf, um, no domain was registered and uh, the Kelios was being used uniquely via IPs. So you'll have like the URLs delivering the payload with the IP only. And then a few months later, they went back to registering domains and, and using the, the DNS. Now the current ones, the 23, um, we still have the fast flux with a TTL of uh, zero one uh, with one IP. And currently the, the, bot ha the botnet has around 2,600 IPs, again, scattered in Eastern Europe, as we saw last time but also Japan and some of the um, Eastern Bloc, but also US. So there are more still infections in the United States. And at the moment you have around 300 and plus live IPs. Again, if you go back and take a sample, you'll find like half of them are running Windows. Um, and unfortunately th that's like a, again, a recurring uh, trend that needs to be uh, addressed. So as Holly was mentioning yesterday, if, uh, the cleaning software that is being used on uh, Windows hosts can include like cleaning routines for Kilios or the Zbot variants, then that would maybe be helpful. Now, these are uh, some of the top ASNs uh, hosting the Kilios bots. And uh, most of them are in Ukraine, but we'll have some recognizable names in the United States for those who are interested. Uh, if you want more details or exchange of data, you can talk to me uh, afterwards uh, so we can maybe work on the cleanup or furthering the investigation. We see like Time Warner here and uh, and Bright House Networks, some uh, residential hosting providers. Uh, looking at the geo distribution, uh, you will see again that it's mainly in Ukraine but also in the United States, like I uh, was mentioning, and you'll have also have Japan, but also uh, Romania for the Romanian friends here. Uh, so that also needs to be addressed, I believe. Now, if we look at the clients that are looking these domains up, so it wasn't as uh, kind of uh, crazy as the Zeus version, the previous proxy network. Uh, there were around 7,000 DNS lookups uh, that I found over uh, like a period of 24 hours. Around 270 unique client IPs scattered across 45 countries. So the infection or at, at the moment is not as big as the uh, previous proxy network, but still it's not negligible. And then you'll see that a lot of clients are coming from the US, also Brazil, Ukraine, Vietnam and India. So uh, in conclusion, uh, what I try to cover here is that the Zbot FastFlux proxy network, uh, you might say it's easy to detect, uh, like FastFlux has been around for a long time, it's like a low hanging fruit in your DNS uh, detection systems. However, what I wanted to do is to um, find patterns in this easily uh, recognizable infrastructure. And then what I found is that this thing was very versatile, it was multi-purpose, depending on clients' needs. Uh, we saw CNCs for a variety of malware, Zeus, Citadel, Ice9, Asprox, uh, DDoS um, bots, a tiny banker, another kind of uh, mini uh, bank in Trojan, and then the list goes on. So I'm sure in uh, the next few days or weeks, we'll see some other malware family uh, using this, this infrastructure to deliver. I, f I forgot to mention the, the new uh, Game Over Zeus in this list. So that was, uh, I was really surprised when I saw that. I was like, wow, this is, uh, this network is really, um, I guess it's very popular. Uh, that's uh, the least I can say. And then it was serving all kinds of uh, URLs for the Zeus config binary and drop zones. The S SU and .ru were the most abused as we saw. Th they are mainly uh, concentrated in terms of hosting in Russia and Ukraine, but the victims are mainly coming from uh, uh, the, like the Western countries. And then finally, like the kind of the, the flash update about Kilios, last year we covered a lot of it and um, we were hoping that we could take it further and, and kind of dismantle the, the network, but that hasn't happened. So uh, my the question to the, the audience here is what more can we do? So 
we were talking about uh, working together for uh, going after the criminals or taking uh, these networks down. So this is an appeal to everyone to kind of make that happen and like be m pragmatic and, and 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 efficient, rather than just like hoping and wishing to do it. So as an acknowledgement, obviously to my uh, good friend, uh, good friend uh, Hendrik Adrian, who couldn't make it here. Um, so this came through some discussions, like a, a lot of discussions we had together. Uh, we were supposed to uh, include the part that he uh, like about his work regarding this. Unfortunately, that wasn't possible. But hopefully, maybe in the next um, botcon for some conference uh, during the year. Uh, there was another friend from the Malware Must Die group that helped me with some discussions and, and data. And then uh, f some friends from Bitdefender present in the audience. Uh, thanks a lot for that. I don't see them. Anyways, and then a friend from XTO also for some discussions uh, to get uh, some more uh, details. These are some of the references. So uh, like I was saying last year, uh, Nick uh, covered some of this these ideas that inspired me. And then you have some more references with the Malware Must Die blogs, uh, and then abuse.ch has a lot of good information and data, and um, also malware traffic analysis. The website is, is full of very useful um, analysis and traffic uh, dumps that help you kind of uh, build intelligence. So uh, that was it. Uh, I finished earlier, so you're welcome to ask questions. Again, this this graphic is from the Open Graffiti platform or tool that we released a few months ago. So I invite you to go check it out. Again, it's uh, open source, and what you can do, like I said, is you just load your data, and then you can use it for a variety of visualizations. It's three D based. You can do. Uh, uh, I, I know it has been used for, let's say, tracking the um, uh, Shodan uh, data and also for acquisition between companies. So the tool is very versatile and it's useful for a variety of reasons. And uh, like I said earlier, if you would like to exchange ideas and tell or work together on some of this research and maybe even more, you can contact me via email or on Twitter or LinkedIn. And um, thank you for your attention and please ask questions if you have any. Wake up. <laughs> Still awake, and uh, if nobody dares, I will. Um, I was wondering, uh, is there any way to attack these kind of fast flash networks by, uh, let's say, contacting the registers themselves, or uh, let's say, slowing the registration process down? or having a bottleneck there that say, okay, you can do registrations at a certain maximum rate. So you're saying, uh, would it, uh, can, can you repeat the question? Well, sorry. I guess it's just my misunderstanding on how fast plugs and really works. Uh, I would expect you need to update the DNS records uh, very fast as well. So um, so is there any way to, to, to get into that process and slow it down or, or do something there? So from what I saw from some of these registrars, and some of you might uh, kind of add to that, they, uh, I mean the resellers, they will have an API-based uh, kind of access to the data. So that's why it's really easy to, these guys will have a script that will update the records with their pool of IPs. And, and uh, so I he doesn't have to go and l log in and change them manually. So it's all API-based. I mean, it's uh, it's convenient, but that's kind of the <laughs> that's what makes it resilient. So I, I feel it's no it's not it's not only a technical issue. It's also you have to talk to the r these registrars and make them aware that the convenience they're creating for the customers is being abused by some of these customers. So uh, from all of this research, the feeling I get is. Okay, you can discover everything you want. You can analyze all the malware you want, uh, do some cool research and blogs and conferences. But if you want to take action, you have it boils down to talking to 
real people and finding the right connections to make things move and happen. So, <laughs> I mean, that's kind of the the conclusion I can say. Okay, and, and for example, at the TLD level, I mean, I assume they're doing, let's say, a dot com registration. So you need to update at that level if you don't want to do a DNS uh, fast flux. Well, the registrars they will have uh, kind of how what's the word accreditation from the registries. So uh, oftentimes the let's say VeriSign who takes care of dot com they wouldn't know anything about this. It's just like uh, very high up in the layer. Even I can, I can, uh, can issue kind of recommendations and best practices, but since they gave the permission to a lot of registrars, like in the thousands, I would say, to let people all over the globe register domains, then they cannot just go and force all of the people who have, all of the registrars who sell services, they cannot force them to kind of uh, take action unless the registrar business wants to. So it's kind of a democracy, but that's why you cannot force people to do it. But yeah, so I it, it's, I feel it's, uh, however, if they, if uh, they kind of try to enforce certain rules, like the ICANN, then uh, things might move uh, and might become more difficult for bad guys to abuse the system. That's kind of the, the feeling I have here. And if anyone has more more to add to that, um, I would like to hear more. So, another question. One, <laughs> two, three. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, quick thing, thank you. I know I know a lot of you through Twitter or social media, so please come by and say hi, because I can't put the uh, 